and uh, Professor E.C. Sheen is going to speak about the first lecture on construction and design of geotextile tube for store production. Professor Sheen is uh, very well known in India. He is our farm. Is currently the vice president ISSM GE for Asia. He after graduation from Korea, he went to United States for his master's and PhD. He has several laurels to his credit. He has been uh, teaching and he has for the last twenty six years published several papers. And he was honored by Incheon National University with several accolades. So to keep the time, let us invite Professor Shin. Go ahead, sir. Professor Shin, we are Hello. able to see you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you you should release. You should release. I release, the... sir. Go ahead. Can you see? Can you see me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. No, okay, no I'm able to see your screen. Oh, but I I try to connect to the video, but your central control is rejected. Oh, uh, Professor Reddy, I oh, think yeah. he's having trouble. Yeah, we are able to see his presentation. No, no, he would like to. He would like to, you know, turn on his video as well. Okay. Sir, uh, it's not possible, sir. Only we can see the presentation, sir. When you're sharing the screen, only we can see the presentation. Sir, sharing, sharing, sharing. So, can you see me? No, not no? yet. No, sir. Your presentation is visible, sir. Okay. Pro yeah, yeah. My presentation is there, right? Yes. Okay. You can I start, start, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me uh, to the ICSMB TC213 uh, scarring and uh, also erosion. And the topic of my presentation today construction and design of a geotextile tube for uh, show protection work. So the content is the background of my presentation today. And I'll go to the uh, some you know preliminary background of the erosion problem in the various country and the various situation, and also the steps of the uh, to the, the design of a, a geotextile tube and uh, from the shape analysis and the stability analysis and the functional analysis, and I present several case history of the utilizing the geotextile tube for shore protection and the uh, construction of the platform for the bridge pier foundation work. See, this is a map of Seoul, and South Korea and the North Korea. So I'll talk about the uh, shore erosion problem. Somewhere, Busan is right here around uh, southeastern uh, part of the Korea, second largest uh, a city, and I'll talk about another project in the somewhere here, uh, Jumunjin Harbor uh, rehabilitation work, and uh, somewhere the Wuljin and some erosion problem somewhere in the west coast, and uh, some project in the uh, this part the Semangum area. As you see here, 1970s, we had we have a uh, pretty good you know uh, the Shisha Rhine and with the uh, uh, beach area, but now we uh, found out a lot of erosion problem here. Oh, and uh, this is a uh, sir, Shin. sir, it yes. is uh, it is, it is uh, ready, sir. Uh, you kindly turn on your video so that you, you will be visible to all of us. Your uh, video is not uh, on, and then you can continue. Okay, good. Yeah, now, now you are able to see you, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. So that, so, so this is another, you know, the, the same area in the Busan area, we had a, a lot of problem and we normally constructed a jetty and the fob for the uh, ship embarking like this, but uh, we have a series of the 
erosion problem. Uh, see the around here beach area. They used to be maybe uh, here, maybe around the sand around there, but you know some erosion happening, and also the our country in the east coast, we have a, a heavy sea wave attack, and after the monsoon, and we have a lot of you know coastal erosion problem. And I think this is the west coast. We rehabilitate uh, this uh, beach area by using the uh, geo cell here, and. Uh, this is all the photographs uh, and the 1971 we have a, a shoreline pretty good shoreline but uh, compared with the uh, 1991 there's a lot of uh, uh, particularly this area we have uh, some uh, series of uh, erosion problem and the uh, Gangnam city east coast because east coast has a, a very deep sea and also has a heavy uh, wave attack and the uh, sand particles migration right uh, uh, by the arrow direction and uh, see here a lot of you know, scarring problem around here and sometimes scarring problem happened due to the some people they uh, dredge in the soil as, uh, and they obtain the sand you know for the construction purpose in the particularly in the west coast of Incheon we have a serious problem of that because of that, we have you no know, sand migrate uh, to the deeper area, so that another problem happening. And, and this is another uh, origin, east coast, and we had uh, some uh, right here. We, we used to be have a coastal line uh, red uh, black dot, but so now is uh, coastal line is uh, retreated, you know. So it's this much of the area as eroded in the uh, past, you know. 15 years, and this is a, a view of Japan, and they see the coastal line as a, this much of the sand beach is uh, eroded, and uh, this Ibarak uh, area, I think uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, west coast, and uh, this is uh, maybe Pacific region, and we have a series of the uh, erosion problem, and I think it's a uh, uh, Mr. Albert Lim Kong will maybe talk about, you know, this phenomenon in the Malaysia. And there's a heavy attack, you know, the coastline and the, with the insulation of the geotube, they can rehabilitate all the beach area and the extent is pretty much. I think I reviewed this paper for the Journal of Korea uh, Civil Engineering uh, the Society Journal for this. I think Mr. Lim will talk about it. See, the problem is in you know, a conventional method of the construction of the embankment along the uh, rivers and the creek that has a, a, a hard imposing structure. So sometimes some country like Incheon we have in the Singapore and some countries, they don't have much of the stone or rocks around the towns. So the city of local raw material and also lack of aesthetics, you know, so and time consuming for construction. This was the alternative new solution. So, and uh, which is a much cheaper way to this, and uh, maybe uh, quickly we can construct this, this method. Maybe a geotextile would be a good solution for uh, this alternative you know, the method. So, that so. Many of you know maybe geotextile too, but this is like a sandwich, uh, uh, not sandwich, a sausage type, you know, of the tube that made of that uh, polypropylene PP or PT, but we prefer to use the PP uh, mat, and uh, we dredge in the soil and fill in the you know that uh, this uh, uh, geotube inside, and we have a. Uh, in it, you know, from time to uh, from place to place, and normally we utilize the dredging the soil, and so that this uh, geotextile tube can be designed to any form of any size for required, and uh, it can quickly fill the you know this very lengthy normally uh, 50 meters of this you know uh, the tube and the width maybe diameter maybe 
uh, three to five meters. And also this tube um, material can fabricate in the factory. So we can have a good uh, quality and the consistency of the uh, textile. And uh, I think it has been used a lot in the last you know, 40 years. Uh, first initiated in the Holland, I think, of road control. And also they use in the US Army of engineers, they use this method for rehabilitation of the uh, that Mississippi River, you know, fraud problem and some New Orleans somewhere. And also uh, it can replace and repair the expensive conventional, you know, maritime structure like uh, uh, TTP and also contain isolation on unacceptable soil, you know, the spoiled soil and uh, maybe uh, 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 like a polluted soil, maybe that would be good methodology, you know, the, the discharge of this with the, uh, this container system. This is a France and if you visit maybe Nice and somewhere, you know, you will see the lot of, you know, coastal erosion problem. And also the Spain has also a lot of uh, problem. I think we, Korea, we had a project to investigate why is the you know, region of the coastal erosion that's very severe, you know, I think the past uh, few years, I think it's, I took these photographs here. Uh, this is a, a view of the Padan, West uh, Sumatra. I think they have a serious tsunami somewhere, you know, uh, here a long time back. My friend has a house, has a, the building has a higher than, you know, uh, 10 meters. So the, whenever tsunami, you know, uh, something warning coming and they climb up to the you know, third floor of the, their uh, flat. Uh, this is a, a groins and along the, the coastal, all this, all the way here, you can see. And here all the groins here. And I enjoy, you know, visiting there. So this is schematic diagram of the groins and the uh, bottom part mostly that uh, medium sand size and also the because they did you know, some uh, experimental work to find out the you know bearing capacity of this mound and there's a bedding stone as a, a rock armor around here all these you know uh, the groins and here the Warhead uh, Island in the Carolina. I know this is a very you know, nice uh, beach and I call the playing golf, but unfortunately here a shark, you know, uh, they are appearing and the uh, beating, you know, eight years old every they have you not know, here, but they, you know, to protection of the you know, shoreline and uh, the beach area, they use the uh, groins, and I. Uh, collected all the data, I know. Uh, the so far 2000 year to the, the 2011, and the, the number of you know research and also real project implemented by utilizing the geotextile tube. So we have a pretty good you know so result. And here we have uh, the rehabilitation work of the Yongjin Bay. I'm going to talk about, and also some. Uh, this also I'll show you that, you know, a discharge of the hot water from the new nuclear power plant. And also we had uh, some uh, grand bridge, you know, temp the, the project for the temporary uh, working platform and also the Incheon Grand Bridge near to our university. And we have also the Semangum Sea Dike. We have about uh, 35 kilometer long, you know, Sea Dike. And we use a geo geotextile tube and here also Busan, new port, we have 3.3 kilometer. And we have a Busan, another port, we have a couple of, and the last one we had some uh, that uh, project that so I think that uh, waste, you know, that uh, like a lime sludge, you know, that in a big amount of waste in the uh, south coast area and uh, the rich is migrate out to the sea. So we want to prevent like a, a barrier system 
and we constructed a twin, you know, the geotextile tube to prevent for that problem. So when you do that, you know, uh, research work of the geotextile tube technology, so we should do first uh, shape analysis, you know, and uh, uh, 2D and 3D, you know, models, and we can uh, formulate and the shape the, which we want to uh, design. And also we check the you know, field model test and the monitoring. And also that we should uh, consider very seriously about uh, uh, filling soil, you know, maybe clay is uh, some problem, you know, of the consolidation also a sedimentation problem, but the soil, sand would be very good, you know, so, so we've got to do, you know, preliminary uh, soil lab tests for settling and also self-weight and consolidation test because we want to shorten in time and we want to have, you know, the higher ratio of the filling of the material inside of the tube. And uh, we wish we could do some, uh, some hydraulic model test. Maybe I know the core engineers, they have a very big, you know, uh, hydraulic, you know, uh, model vaccine so they can simulate which is you know, the real situation in the uh, coastal area. And we can have an empirical equation and also a stability analysis for the uh, overturning and the sliding and also bearing capacity. And also we should consider that uh, functional analysis and the shock protection and erosion control and the seabed soil uh, migration. I think so we, uh, basically we, first of all, we should, you know, uh, the uh, check of the mechanical uh, performance and tensile strength and also elongation. They all, uh, these are the, the yes. And also hydraulic performance, like the permeability and the dynamic loading resistance and so on. I think this is one of example of this. And this is a, a view of the tensile strength test to the wider stripes. And uh, this we, we have in our laboratory, have a machine. We can feel the, you know, the, the, the sample of the geotextile tube and put it inside in the box and we the feed in the soil, which you want to use in the field. And then we uh, plunge it you know, up and down in the fluctuate. We obtain the uh, water and the see the suspended solid, you know, we don't want to have a lot of suspended solid around here. They may be uh, polluted in the sea water and they check the, you know, clogging problem of the uh, textile. And this is a small, uh, the shape and the, this is a tube and the schematic diagram. And so we usually use that in the first stage of the design and to use the, you know, that uh, the Rajinsky, Professor Rajinsky, you know, he developed the geocops program. So 2D, we can find out, you know, uh, the, the tube shape with, according to the uh, hydraulic, you know, pumping uh, pressure. And also the dimension we did, you know, the, uh, using the abacus and to the shape. And uh, this is more uh, similar to the real situation. And we see analysis, you know, like, uh, 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 low, you know, the, uh, the uh, Young's modulus and the higher Young's modulus, we checked it with the hydraulic pressure. And uh, we, uh, this result, we compare with the uh, field model condition. And I think there's a good agreement with that. And this is we use the flag and uh, we see the, you know, uh, vertical, you know, settlement or displacement. And because this is important when you have a, three layers of geotextile tube, we have a, a planned, you know, the uh, ground level, but uh, we, after you uh, constructed the geotextile tube, there may be sometimes that too much settled. So we cannot reach it to the required, you know, that uh, height of the, uh, the embankment. Then we have a, a big problem, you know, too. And also we need that uh, global stability when you have a, this is, let's say, geotextile tube, and then there may be 
uh, you need you know the find out you know factor of safety of, for, for against you know sliding so this is sometimes a serious i think we have a very high value of the uh, global stability and first of all we sh we collect obtain the sample for the filling material and check the you know consolidation test and the sedimentation it takes about you know uh, three uh, two hours three hours you know to reach to the you know uh, primary consolidation but this one is more like this uh, silty sand but this one is a more silty clay that takes you know uh, four days so so this material maybe has a problem as using as a uh, filling material. Uh, let's see the stability analysis of geotextile two. And first of all, we need you know check the sliding uh, with the, the you know wave attack, and also the overturning problem, and the bearing capacity uh, problem also. I think some uh, I think a professor or uh, Chu uh, Jin Chu in the National University of Singapore, uh, no, no, the Nanyang uh, Institute of Technology, he reviewed, you know, one time he researched on the bearing capacity problem. And now uh, National University of Singapore, Professor Chu, he, he does some research work and the uh, small size, uh, relatively small size of the uh, uh, geo bag for using the uh, embankment of the you know, Singapore, that uh, port area. And we see, we checked you know, uh, the hydraulic model test and also we, we did you know, some uh, the uh, numerical analysis for calculation of the sliding. So as you see here, we have a, a two different model module. One is a single tube, uh, the other one is a double tube, okay? And also filling material, as you see here, 85 percentage of filling soil, uh, 90 and 95. So that that the tube, the less filling and a little bit flat bottom. So which has a higher friction uh, compared with the uh, no full filling the tube. Full filling tube is more rolling, you know. When the when the wave attack. Uh, that's why here. All the two in tube and uh, 85 percentage of the uh, uh, filling material of a geotube, which gives the higher, you know, factor of safety for the uh, sliding and the overturning and also uh, bearing capacity. And so we see the uh, tensile strength. Uh, sometimes if you uh, put it, you know, too much higher pressure of the injection, there may be rupture, you know, in it, particularly in it, you know, they rupture, you know, we experience that. So, so we should control it for that. And also the permeability, you know, so we, we did use that uh, PET, the geotextile for the geotube, we had a problem for the drainage, you know, but the PP has a very good result. And, and also we have uh, some two types of the uh, geocops, you know, uh, analysis. And let's say we have uh, maybe two stacks of the, you know, geotextile tube. Of course, we should check that uh, the sliding or uh, the top part and also overturning and the overall part, you know, that five meter you know, height. And uh, we check the, you know, that uh, factor of safety for uh, each analysis for that. And I'll uh, move to the real you know, case history of the geotextile tube application. In here, uh, Korea located here and uh, India is far here. And we are talking about the here east coast of the Korean Peninsula. And so we have uh, mm, the here the the the, the blue color and the, which he, uh, indicated of the uh, cold water cold current from the uh, here Kamchatka or northern part of the uh, peninsula and also warm current coming from south to the you know to the north and they connected together here so that's why we have a lot of you know 
the erosion problem and the storm comes and so has a problem right here. Maybe you carefully observation of the top of the, this wall. What is this barbed wire? That means uh, this location near to the uh, demilitarized zone boundary between North Korea and South Korea. So we want to protect our land coastal line for infiltrators. So we have, you know, barbed wire on the top, you know? So this is a situation, but we have like this, you know, big serious, you know, scarring problem. So we want to uh, rehabilitate, you know, this you know, beach area. So one proposal we uh, propose in a growing system here. I think this is one of, one of the alternative. And another alternative we use, you know, like this submerged breakwater system with the parallel uh, against the coastal line. And we want to check with the uh, TTP in you know, a breakwater system. So, so, which, so finally we analyzed by you know, several reasons and we adopted you know, uh, parallel you know, uh, the uh, geotex tube installation. And we had uh, several benchmarks and we have twin tube from our you know, experimental work. And hydraulic model test, we found out you know, twin tube is a much better performance against the you know, sliding and also, and we find out the you know, so depth of water, which would be suitable for this against our analysis. So I think it's a from the coastal line about 100, 150 meters. And we want to compare with this. And depth of water, four meters, Length of the geotextile tube is about 50 meters and the diameter three meters and so on. Then uh, these are the, I think uh, the, the, these are the ASTM that requires all the specification for, for the material and we checked it and we uh, meet the requirement. And also we uh, using the sand, you know, I think it's a pretty good sand for the backfill material and in terms of the uh, the grain size distribution and also the uh, permeability. And we have a dredging ship. Uh, ship is uh, like this size and the crane 50 ton. And now we uh, placement of the, you know, this, uh, the bedding, you know, the uh, geotextile. And uh, normally we do use about 20 ton per meter. The, uh, the tensile strength of a tube and uh, using the uh, stand bag and we fix it and this we uh, filling the soil and we instrument it and uh, uh, put the pressure and also the vertical uh, the uh, vertical the earth, 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 earth pressure cell and also, we checked, you know, it is a benchmark from the coastal line. And so we want to see the, you know, uh, the the change of the coastal line, and we checking it as compared with, you know, before and after. As we see, comparison left hand side or right hand side, our the sand, you know, uh, migrate very much, you know, towards the extended towards the uh, coast the sea area, and. We, we checked you know, all the level of the uh, sand ground and with a little bit, you know, we increase. But that means in the sand is uh, accumulate, you know, uh, behind you know, uh, the uh, geotube, as you see the observation. I think this is very important to see the, you know, that seaweed and the marine creature growing on the uh, surface of the geo geotextile tube because that uh, the maritime, all this uh, fishermen, they're not happy with the installation of uh, this geotube, you know, in front of their, you know, uh, coastal area. So, so we, from our observation, this is a very environmentally sound and a good method for the fish and also agriculture purpose. And this is another project. We had the nuclear power plant, they discharged the warm water to the sea. When you, you know, the discharge the water, 
then the coastal area is eroded very much. So they want to you know, prevent the erosion. So we, we use the geotextile tube for here and the diameter three meters. And again, uh, 50 meters, you know, the uh, ranks and they see that all utility, uh, barge ship and dredging pump and the uh, from mat. And this is a sand bag. We want to fix that you know, apron at the bottom of the sea. And you see they're filling the geotextile tube place it and filling it. And uh, uh, this is a schematic diagram about the diameter of five meters and the uh, uh, second stage. This is for the platform for, uh, for the uh, bridge uh, pier construction work. And I quickly move to this and we're spreading apron mat and the geotextile tube and we pumping it, fill it and make a double deck as you see that yeah so this is a much cheaper way uh, to uh, to construct a platform for the bridge pier maybe we normally we use when the sheet pile so in this case we instead of a sheet pile we use the uh, geotextile tube which is much economical and uh, stable and finally we remove this part and this is another project, similar project in the Incheon Bay. Our university is you know, located here. And this Grand Bridge, that, this area. You know, so we use that uh, geotextile tube. And this is, uh, you know, uh, I think, uh, three layers of a stack of a geotextile tube and diameter five meters. And uh, uh, this is one, uh, I think, about uh, 1.5 kilometer. So we have uh, three decks, you know. So, uh, back and forth and here and here and the uh, great length of the geotextile tube used here and we did some uh, uh, that uh, management of the assistance of the technical uh, problem of the stability for this particular uh, project and also design for this and uh, we we checked the you know, sliding and the overturning bearing capacity as a user and we see you know uh, satisfy the requirement. And also this is the uh, view of the installation of the apron mat and uh, uh, setting the geotextile tube and we pumping the you know, uh, sand slowly into the tube. And here, I think after we installed in the first layer of the geotube, we want to uh, you know, put on, place this uh, second stage of the geotube and uh, we felt you know, maybe some uh, next layer of the, the geotube maybe rolling, you know, and the falling down, maybe sliding, maybe we worry about. So we, we adopted, you know, like a, a mattress form and a geo form, and we filled the you know, cement milk inside and uh, uh, just naturally that, you know, stabilize. And then we stack up the next layer of the uh, geotube, which is, increase the stability very much. I think as a conclusion, see that the prediction of a geotextile tube shape, we can do uh, two dimensional strain, three dimensional you know, final element analysis by using the uh, abacus. And also we should check the, when you selecting the uh, filling material, we got to do drainage condition and the consolidation you know, phenomenon. So that we found out is good agreement with the field model test and we check it. And also stability, uh, sliding, overturning and the bearing capacity, particularly in the marine area. And also when you have uh, some under the water, we need to have uh, some hydraulic model test to simulate the field situation. So the, we should find out the reasonable factor of safety. And also, uh, that Professor Shim, uh, yes. uh, you, can, you have to wind up in the next five yeah, minutes yeah, or so. so. Yeah, no, yeah. this is the last slide. Also, Thank you, sir. Also, so with uh, no, the uh, geotube, when you wave attack, you know, because, because the geotube is a twin tube normally we use, and the diameter five meters after putting the sand and the drainage of the water from the sand that make them very hard and a big structure. So they can, you know, uh, break the, you know, 
a wave attack. And also then we can minimize also a migration of the sand seabed uh, because that sand coming in and when it comes out and the down direction, you know, so that sand is uh, accumulated, you know, behind the uh, geotextile tube. And also submerged geotextile tube would be a good solution uh, because of the uh, inhabited seaweed and uh, around the geotube and also the habitant of the sailfish. So this environmentally sustainable technology for shore protection. Thank you very much for your pay attention. On behalf of all the participants, uh, just I'll pose uh, a question to Professor Shin. So in many Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. In many countries, uh, your tubes are being uh, used for mitigating uh, beach erosion. And uh, still in some countries, uh, uh, people are opting for uh, groins. So uh, in, in uh, which conditions uh, do you suggest uh, that uh, compared to groin, uh, geotubes are helpful? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You see that when the groin, you see that groin is more exposed, you know, expose the ground surface. So sometimes if you build the groin by the geotextile tube, because of that uh, people, they put on their foot on there and also a lot of you know, activity on the top of the groin. So that's why the, the geotextile tube also, you know, uh, the, I would say they damage it, you know? So it kind of needs some protection by the uh, geotextile and uh, some other, you know, methodology. And also it, it look, it's not very uh, environmentally friendly. So my suggestion is maybe depth of water is not very deep, uh, like Malaysia, they have a very successfully, you know, they implemented the shore protection, the you know, mangrove growing area. But depth of water is not four meters, maybe uh, two meters or something. Then you take the tube like a parallel, a parallel with the, the, the coastal line, that would be good, you know, and uh, very easy. To, to construct it for that and for stability and otherwise, because you see, when you go to the coastal area, if you towards the sea, the level is not the same, you know, because geotextile tube is very important. When you have a, a level at the bottom of the tube in the ground, because you know, sometimes we have a rocky area, the seabed, there is a problem, you know, make a reveling it. The real situation. Experimentary is okay, but so I prefer to have a same level of the ground, you know, and uh, where the foundation is there, you know, of the textile tube. Hi, Daniel. So, so I parallel is uh, with the coastal line would be uh, the, the better situation and the construction wise and also stability wise. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification.